Hello everyone. Uh, let us solve a problem on uh, trusses uh, now. And uh, trusses can be typically solved uh, by two uh, different uh, ways. Uh, the first method is uh, where you use a method of joints or the method of pins. And then in the uh, second method uh, you use the uh, method of sections. Uh, the method of sections is a slightly more uh, involved method uh, where we use equations of uh, rigid body equilibrium. Uh, in the method of uh, joints, we use equations of uh, particle equilibrium, as uh, we will see. Uh, so, first of all, uh, here is the problem. Uh, so, problem on trusses. And uh, we are going to be using the uh, method of joints. And uh, here is the truss problem. Uh, so I have a series of uh, joints that are pin connected and then uh, there are forces that are applied on the uh, pins themselves. And uh, of course the entire uh, structure or the entire truss is uh, supported uh, in the following manner. Right? Uh, so here are uh, uh, the different uh, bars which are pin connected. So a set of uh, triangles which are uh, joined end on end here. And then uh, one more. Now let us look at uh, the way the uh, pins are connected here. So uh, there's a pin connecting two of these. Then uh, there's a pin, one more pin here, one more pin here, one there, and then uh, one there. And then there is a tension, uh, a cable in tension that is attached here. Okay, so this cable in tension is at an angle of uh, 90 degrees to that uh, particular line that we're going to be seeing. Uh, so this is a cable and this cable is attached to the uh, wall right there. So this is a cable and uh, we know that cables are always in a state of tension. And then uh, there is a pin support at uh, one of the other ends of the truss as uh, shown here. So this is a pin support. And uh, we have uh, handled uh, pin supports when we uh, performed uh, rigid body equilibrium equations. Uh, there are two other uh, bars of the uh, trusses, actually three other bars of the trusses which are attached as uh, shown now. Okay, so there are three uh, vertical bars. There is one here, then there is uh, one more here, and then there is one there. And then uh, there are also pins which are connecting these vertical bars onto the other horizontal pieces. Uh, so these are all the pins here. And uh, let's uh, call these uh, by some names here. Uh, so we start off as uh, pin A, then this is pin B, and then this is uh, pin C right here. And then uh, we have pin D, and then I have pin E here. And then uh, let's call this as uh, pin F, and uh, pin G, and then pin H. And then on this uh, truss, uh, we of course need uh, dimensions, we need the forces uh, applied as well. Uh, first of all, uh, there is a force of uh, 30 kilonewtons that is applied vertically downwards at the pin at A. So this is uh, 30 uh, kilonewtons. And then there is a force of uh, 20 kilonewtons that is applied on the pin at C. So this is uh, uh, 20 kilonewton force right there. And uh, we are told that the angle made by the cable uh, with the line DE is uh, 90 degrees. Uh, right there. Uh, we are told that each and every angle inside is uh, 60 degrees. Uh, so these are all equilateral triangles, uh, not the right angle ones of course, uh, but the rest of them are equilateral triangles. So this is a, a 60 degree angle, uh, that's a 60 degree angle there, that's a 60 degree angle. This is a 60 and this is also 60. 60 degrees and uh, uh, vice versa, so this is also a 60 degree angle and uh, so on and uh, this length here is given as uh, 5 meters, each of the lengths are uh, 5 meters, uh, so starting from uh, here on to there, uh, this distance will also be 5 meters because they are all equilateral triangles and uh, so this is also going to be 5 meters. Alright, so this is the uh, uh, truss here, so I have a bar AB which is connected to bar BG, connected to bar GD, then DE, then I have EF, and then I have FC, then I have CH, then I have these uh, vertical fellows BH, I have GC, and then I have DF, and then I have this cable here, and a pin support. And uh, the aim of the problem is to find uh, the force in each of the bars.
Okay, so find force. In each bar of the truss and uh, state if these bars are in tension or in compression. Tension or compression. And uh, let us also find uh, the cable tension here. There are uh, two ways to find uh, the cable tension. Uh, we will look at both the ways, uh, uh, but we will find the answer through one of the ways only. Alright, so I have the series of bars that are pin connected uh, as shown in the figure and our aim is to find uh, the force in each of these bars. Uh, before we perform the analysis through the method of joints, uh, let us uh, take a look at uh, uh, some of the um, assumptions uh, that are involved in uh, trusses. Uh, so there are a couple of assumptions that uh, we are going to be using uh, uh, throughout uh, in terms of handling trusses. Uh, so here are the assumptions. So, uh, assumptions. The first assumption is that uh, the bars of the trusses are weightless. Or negligible. Right, so that's the uh, first assumption. Uh, the second assumption is that um, each of the uh, bars of the trusses are connected to each of the other bars uh, uh, by means of pins at the end and uh, these pins are uh, smooth and frictionless. Okay, so the uh, bars of a truss are pin connected at the ends and the pins are smooth and are frictionless. The third assumption is uh, perhaps the uh, most important assumption here which is what makes uh, each of these bars a two force member uh, and uh, this assumption is that uh, if at all there is a force applied on the truss it is applied only on the pins. Uh, the forces are not applied on the bars of the trusses themselves. Okay, so all applied loads are acting on the pins only, which means that no applied force acts on the bars. Right, and uh, because of all these three assumptions, as we would have seen in lecture, uh, each bar of a truss becomes a two-force member. So, as a consequence, each bar of a truss uh, becomes a two-force member. And uh, this is a key point uh, because this uh, helps us uh, perform the analysis in a quick and uh, easy way. Of course, um, uh, the validity of some of these assumptions can be, of course, questioned uh, by saying that the bars of the trusses, uh, uh, the weight of the bars is negligible. Uh, so this is negligible weight here. Uh, this may or may not uh, be reasonable depending on the situation, but for the most part, the applied loads are uh, much larger than the weight of the uh, bars of the trusses themselves. So, uh, from uh, from a point for a standpoint of engineering analysis, this seems like a reasonable one. Um, then, uh, by saying that the pins uh, are smooth and frictionless, uh, we are saying that uh, we are going to be ignoring the presence of any friction uh, when the pins are uh, connecting the bars of a truss. And then eventually there will be certain uh, applied loads which will have to be shared on the uh, bars of the trusses but then these are not applied on the bars themselves but they are applied on the pins uh, as you are uh, seeing here in the third assumption. 
and if these assumptions are violated then uh, we see that uh, we don't have a truss uh, but we have a frame okay so only if these assumptions are true uh, we have a truss and then as a consequence of these three assumptions we can say that each bar of a truss is a two force member all right now uh, when uh, performing uh, the analysis uh, we start off the problem by assuming <coughs> certain things uh, here are the things that we assume upon starting the problem uh, so to begin the problem or to begin the solution uh, we start off by saying that okay let all the bars of the truss uh, be in a state of tension Right, so this is an assumption. <coughs> we do not know if this is uh, right or not. If we are right, uh, then what will happen is that uh, the answers that we get will be positive numbers. If we are wrong, if our assumption is not right, then what will happen? We should be getting a negative answer and that means that the bar is indeed in compression and not in tension as we observed here. Uh, so we are going to say that each of the bars are in tension and then uh, the consequence of this is uh, when we draw the pin free body diagram, uh, we will see that if a bar is in tension then it is going to be pulling on the pin. Okay, so bar in tension. This will be pulling on the pin. And uh, this is this is a really really key statement here, and uh, this uh, enables us to uh, very quickly jump in and uh, draw the pin free body diagrams. And so this is one of the assumptions that we're going to be making, and uh, uh, we will also uh, assume that uh, okay the problem can be started uh, by uh, making use of uh, the assumptions in the previous page where the bars of the truss are weightless and uh, uh, so on and so forth, and. Uh, we will then uh, say that okay, uh, before we begin uh, the actual uh, formal force analysis, uh, we will inspect the truss and see if there are any uh, zero force members. Okay, so then inspect for zero force members. And uh, we have already seen in class uh, the criteria for uh, uh, zero force members. Uh, the minimum criterion that has to be satisfied is uh, there should be no more than uh, three bars connected at a pin. If we, if we see more than three bars connected at a pin, then the chances of that pin having a zero force member is uh, very minimal. Uh, so we can skip uh, the inspection part of that. All right. Uh, so with all these in mind, uh, let us start uh, looking at uh, the problem itself for us. So here is the um, problem to begin with, uh, here is the original problem and then uh, we are going to be starting off uh, by seeing and uh, inspecting if there are any zero force members or not. Uh, you see that at the point A uh, there is a force that is acting and then there are two of these bars which are attached uh, connected to each other uh, which means that they are all non-collinear so chances of having a zero force member is very minimal according to the criterion that we have seen in class. Uh, then uh, we move on to the next pin. Uh, we see that at the pin B, uh, we know that uh, there is this bar BG, there is a bar BC, there is a bar BH and then there is a bar BA uh, which are all connected to each other at the point B. There are more than three bars connected at that pin uh, which means that the chances of having a zero force member is minimal uh, so we move on. Then I go to the next alphabet which is pin C. I see the same story repeating. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bars which are connected to each other and uh, so obviously chances of having a zero force member is minimal. Pin D, similar such story. I have the cable tension, obviously not zero. Then I have uh, the uh, bar DG, I have the bar DC, I have the bar DF and then the bar DE. All of them are connected together at the point D and so this is also not going to have any zero force members at least on the first inspection. And then I go to the point E, this is pin supported and then uh, there is also uh, the bar EF and then the bar ED. So there are forces in all the uh, two directions and so we are going to have uh, uh, no zero force members at the pin E. Which leaves us with the uh, following pins, pin H, pin F and then pin G. And uh, let's take a closer look at the pin G uh, by drawing the diagram for pin G. Uh, so here we are going to do that. 
So this is uh, uh, the original figure and then I have a uh, pin G uh, right there. Uh, we assume each of the bars of the trusses to be in tension which means that every bar is going to be pulling on the pin. So I'm going to have an F G D and F G D is the same as F uh, D G. We are not going to be distinguishing between the two and then uh, we are going to have F B G which is the same as F G B. We once again do not distinguish between that and then uh, we have FGC, look at this here, FGC which is the same as FCG uh, because we don't uh, make any distinction between that. According to the criterion that we've learned in class, uh, we see that there are two of the bars which are collinear, there is a third bar that is non-collinear and so this non-collinear bar has to be the zero force member which means that this bar GC right there has to be a zero force member. And uh, by the same criterion, if I look at the pin at F, I can draw the bar FD, I can draw the bar FC, and then I can draw the bar FE. Right? So if I look at the pin at uh, the point F, um, so right here, uh, I have, I'm going to have FE or EF, then I'm going to have FD, and then I'm going to have FFC. And uh, we see that uh, at this particular point, there are three bars which are connected. Two of them are collinear, the third one is non-collinear, which means that this bar is a zero force member. And then likewise, I can also draw the uh, pin diagram at the point H. And then I can see, okay, if I look at the pin, pin H, I'm going to have three bars, BH, AH, and HC, which are all connected together. So look at that. I'm going to have FBH, which is the same as FHB. Uh, we will not be writing this, um, we can write it in, the, in, in any order that we want this to be, uh, so we are not going to keep on mentioning this particular fact. I uh, just want to say this uh, the first few times. And then I'm going to have FHC, and then I'm going to have FHA. And you see that this is non-collinear, the other two are collinear. According to the criterion we've learned in class, this bar is going to be the zero force member. So the story that we have so far is the following. Since this is a zero force member, so this is a zero force member, we know that this force has to be equal to that force. Since this is a zero force member, we know that this force has to be equal to that force. This is a zero force member, we know that this has to be equal to that. And so we can make a list of these um, uh, as, as the following. Uh, so from the first one, uh, we can say that FGB is equal to FGD. and then FGC is zero. Right, so this is the conclusion from the first figure right there. And then from the second figure, uh, we can say the following, FFC is the same as FFE. And then we know that FFD is zero. So this is the conclusion from this particular figure and then from the third figure uh, we can say that FHA is the same as FHC. FHA is the same as FHC and then we know that FBH is equal to zero. Right, so that is the conclusion that we get from uh, these three uh, figures and uh, this kind of sets the tone because uh, uh, now we know that uh, just by looking at the figure uh, we know that this is uh, going to be a zero force member BH is a zero force member, GC is a zero force member and then DF is also a zero force member so this is not going to be a part of our analysis at all. Uh, we can ignore its presence here. And uh, we know that FAH is the same as HC and then uh, similarly FFC is the same as uh, FFE and then uh, we know that FBG is the same as FGD. And all we have to do is uh, look at each of these pins now, perform the force, al force analysis or force balance for a particle in equilibrium and then uh, we should be able to find the unknowns. Alright. So we go to the next step of the uh, problem uh, where we choose what pin to start the analysis at. And uh, for this uh, we see uh, from the main figure. Okay, so what are the pins uh, that I can start my analysis at? If I look at the pin at A, uh, you see that there are only two bars that are connected, FAB and then FAH. And uh, for a particle in equilibrium, there are two equations of equilibrium, which means that I can find both the unknowns FAB and FAH by using equations of particle equilibrium. So I'm going to start at the pin A. 
Right, so starting at the pin A, so we draw the pin free body diagram. Uh, so here is the pin. And then I have uh, the following. I have F, H, C and uh, F, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, F, A, H, uh, F, H, C and A, H are the same. So uh, we are not wrong in saying that. Uh, I have, first of all, F, A, B. And then uh, I have F, A, H. And then I have a force that is acting down here. Uh, which has a magnitude of 30 kilonewtons. So this is 30 kilonewtons. I have my x, y and uh, uh, positive system set up here. This is x, this is y. Uh, there are no moments involved in a pin analysis, uh, so we are not interested in that at all. Uh, so this is my positive x and this is my positive y. I know the angle made by AB with the uh, horizontal is uh, 60 degrees. I'm going to split AB into its components. So I'm going to have uh, this angle here is 60 degrees, so this is going to be FAB sine 60, and uh, this component here is going to be FAB cosine 60. And uh, the first step in this uh, process is I'm going to perform a force equilibrium as you can see in the y direction to begin with. So if we say that summation of all the forces in the y direction is 0, force is pointing up being equal to 0, then I see that F A B sine 60 minus 30 is equal to 0, which means that I can solve for F A B. And I get F A B to be uh, 30 kilonewtons divided by sine 60, which is approximately 34.64 kilonewtons. And uh, you see that since this is a positive value, this is going to be in tension. All right, so our guess about AB was right. Uh, then we perform the force balance along the y, uh, x axis. So force balance along the x axis, some of the forces in the x direction is zero. And uh, this uh, tells me that if I look at the forces, I have FAH pointing along the x axis, FAB cos 60 also along the uh, uh, x axis. So I just have to write them out as FAH plus FAB cosine 60 is equal to zero which means that FAH is uh, minus FAB cosine 60 or minus 34.64 times cosine 60 is a half. So that's going to be minus 17.32 kilonewtons. And the negative sign indicates that FAH is actually in compression. So this means that FAH is 17.32 kilonewtons in compression and FAB is 34.64 kilonewtons in tension. So these are the results from the uh, pin analysis at uh, the point A. And uh, this is the pin at the point A. All right, and then uh, we keep doing the same thing. We say that, okay, uh, once I'm done with the pin A, I move to the next pin here. Uh, so alphabetically, we go to the next pin, which is the pin at uh, B. So if I go to the pin at B, uh, look at this here, I'm going to have FAB or FBA, which is the same as FAB. Then I'm going to have FBH, but FBH is zero, so I'm not going to include that in my analysis. I'm going to have FBC, and then I'm going to have FBG. And then I'm going to assume all of these bars to be in a state of tension. All right, so let's uh, draw the pin uh, free body diagram at the point B. So at pin B, now we have the following. Uh, so here is a pin and uh, we draw each of these uh, forces uh, right uh, here as we see. Um, so if you look at this, I have FAB and uh, FAB is going to be pointing down this way because we found out that FAB was in tension, uh, we just pointed the way it is. Uh, so this is going to be F. A, B, and then I'm going to have F, B, C. I do not know what the direction of F, B, C is. Is it in tension or in compression? So as a result, I just assume it to be in tension. So this is going to be F, B, C. And then I'm going to have the third one, which is F, B, G. Right? And uh, so that's going to be uh, completely horizontal. And uh, so this is F, B, G, which is the same as F, G, B, as we have said in the past.
Uh, now I know that F A B has a magnitude which we found out earlier on. Uh, so this is uh, first of all pin B, and uh, the uh, magnitude of F A B uh, we found out was uh, 34.64 kilonewtons in uh, tension. Uh, so the results that we know from before F A B was uh, 34.64 kilonewtons in tension, which means that there are only two unknowns here, and uh, we can find uh, both the unknowns, uh, as you can see in this problem. Uh, now. Uh, we have to look at uh, the angle made by FAB with the uh, vertical and uh, the angle made by FBC with the vertical. Uh, so if I draw that here, I'm going to have components of FAB in the vertical, components of FAB along the horizontal. I'm going to have components of FBC along the vertical and components of FBC along the horizontal as well. And I know the angles made uh, by each of them. Right, uh, so we know that uh, this angle inside here is uh, going to be half of uh, 60, so that's going to be 30 degrees, and so that's also going to be uh, 30 degrees. Uh, so if we write out each of these components, uh, and this one here is going to be FBC, and this is cosine 30, so that's going to be sine 30, and then this is going to be FBC cosine 30 and then likewise uh, we're going to have FAB the components of FAB written out are as uh, follows uh, so this is going to be FAB cosine 30 and then this component here is going to be FAB sine 30 and amongst these three uh, we know the uh, magnitude of uh, FAB which is 34.64 kilonewtons in tension and all we are doing is uh, performing a force balance. Once again, I set up the same XY coordinate frame, uh, positive X this way, positive Y, and uh, we start summing forces along the uh, uh, Y direction to begin with, because I see in the X direction there are two unknowns, FBG and FBC sine 30. In the Y direction there is only one unknown, FAB cosine 30 is known to me, FBC cosine 30 is unknown to me. Uh, so summation of forces in the Y direction is zero, all the forces pointing up are positive and so minus FAB cosine 30 minus FBC cosine 30 put together is equal to zero which means that FBC is equal to minus FAB and uh, this is uh, going to be minus 34.64 kilonewtons. Right, so we were now able to find out FBC and uh, this implies that FBC is actually 34.64 kilonewtons but in compression and not in tension and uh, we do a uh, similar uh, force balance in the uh, y direction uh, in the x direction the remaining direction so summation of all the forces along the x direction uh, forces pointing to the right uh, taken as positive set that equal to zero what are all the forces that we have uh, we're going to have FBG then I'm going to have a minus FAB sine 30 and then I'm going to have a minus. Uh, I'm going to have a plus FBC uh, sine 30 here. Both of these put together should be equal to zero. And uh, watch this. Uh, so this is FBG uh, is uh, FAB sine 30 minus FBC sine 30, but FBC is already minus 34.64. Uh, so this is going to be sine 30 times 34.64 minus minus 34.64 sine 30 is a half um, which means that FBG is 34.64 kilonewtons uh, we get a positive value which means that this is in tension and uh, here we get FBC to be a negative value which means that FBC is in compression uh, so uh, we can uh, write this uh, eventually at the end of the problem uh, where we uh, collect all these uh, elements and then write out the answers all right uh, so we are done with uh, the uh, force balance at uh, pin B uh, we move on to the next pin and our aim is to find a pin uh, that will give us uh, pretty much uh, all of the answers at the end of it uh, so here are the things that we know so far right uh, so uh, we know AB, we found out AB, uh, we found out AH, uh, because we know AH, we know HC as well. And then uh, we found out FBC, we found out FBG, because we know FBG, we know FGD as well. We found that these were both uh, uh, equal to each other. And uh, so 
if I look at the pin at C, uh, you see that uh, BC, uh, say GC is zero, so that's not going to be a part of the analysis. I'm, I'm going to have uh, CD, I'm going to have CF, I'm going to have CH, and I'm going to have CB, and then this 20 kN force, don't forget that. And uh, so you see there are only two unknowns at that uh, point at C, and uh, we can uh, perform the analysis uh, for the force balances there. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, pin C. So looking at pin C, once again, uh, we always choose all the bars to be in a state of tension. That's a pin C. So here is the pin at C. Uh, we first uh, draw all the forces uh, which are acting. Uh, so look at the figure here. Uh, here is the pin at C. The first thing is the 20 kN force uh, which is going to be acting vertically downwards. Right, so 20 kN. And then uh, we're going to be having uh, forces from FBC. You notice that even though uh, in the previous uh, uh, page uh, we obtained FBC to be in compression, I'm still going to draw it in uh, uh, tension, but I'm going to look at it uh, from a negative uh, uh, standpoint. I usually do not change the direction of the uh, force on the bars. Uh, what I do is I keep track of the negatives. If I obtain it as a negative value, I keep the negative value, but I keep the direction still to be in tension, uh, which means it obviously it's in compression. Uh, now I have FHC, which uh, we obtained uh, previously. Uh, we know the value of FHC. Right, so this is uh, first of all FBC and then uh, this is FHC then I'm going to have uh, two other uh, bars uh, I'm going to have uh, FCD as uh, will be marked here which is going to be in a state of tension uh, you see that this is unknown and then this is pulling on the pin at C and then I'm going to have one last one which is FCF And then uh, each of these bars which are at an angle, I'm going to break them into their horizontal and vertical components. And uh, you see that uh, this is going to be the horizontal component of BC, the uh, vertical and horizontal components of BC. Uh, we know that uh, the angle made by uh, BC with the horizontal is uh, 60 degrees. So this is going to be FBC times sine 60 and this is FBC cosine 60. And uh, this is going to be FBC sine 60. And uh, we're going to do likewise for FCD, uh, break it into a horizontal component and a vertical component right here. This angle is also 60 degrees uh, as we have seen. And uh, so this is going to be FCD cosine 60. And then this is FCD sine 60. Alright, so we have all these uh, forces uh, uh, for the uh, force balance at uh, the pin at C. Uh, so here is the pin at C and uh, we have our uh, positive and uh, uh, negative x axis or y axis uh, which are drawn here. So this is positive x and then this is positive y. Uh, so I look at the pin at C and I see which direction should I start off with. I know that FBC uh, to begin with. I know that FBC is minus 34 0.64 kilonewtons. So this is uh, an answer that I know from before. I also know one more answer here, FHC. FHC is minus 17.32 kilonewton. These were answers that we obtained in the past. As we can go back and see, if I look at uh, the pin at B, we obtained FBC to be minus 34.64 kilonewtons. And then uh, we also found out that FAH was 17.32, but FAH is the same as FHC. Uh, this is something we could uh, probably write down here. FAH is the same as FHC. And uh, so that's uh, 17.32 kilonewtons in compression. Alright, so we have uh, those two uh, values, uh, so we start off uh, force balance in uh, which direction? The direction that contains the minimum number of unknowns. Uh, you see that I have to do this in the uh, vertical direction, right? Because uh, FCD sine 60 is the only unknown in the vertical direction. If I did this in the horizontal direction, FCD is an unknown, FCF is also an unknown. Uh, so that is not a great idea. Alright, so I start off by summing forces in the y direction pointing upwards, uh, forces are treated as positive. I'm going to have FCD sine 60, FBC 
sin 60 and then the minus 20 kilonewton force all of these put together is equal to 0 which means that F C D sin 60 is 20 minus F B C is minus 34.64 times sine of 60 so if I solve for F C D I obtain F C D to be in a state of tension and a value of 57.7 Kilonewtons, and uh, this is in a state of tension. Right, and then I'm left with the uh, force balance along the x-axis, uh, so that should be uh, giving me the value of F uh, C F. Uh, so forces along the x-axis set that equal to zero. Forces pointing to the right, taken as uh, positive. Uh, what are the forces pointing to the right? I have F C F. Then I have F C D cosine 60, and then I have F H C pointing the other way, and then I have F B C cosine 60, all of them equal to zero. Our F C F is now going to be the following. It's a F C D cosine 60, uh, which is uh, known to us uh, here, 57.7 uh, kilonewtons in uh, tension, and then I have F H C, which is uh, minus 17.32, and then I have F B C, which is uh, minus 34.64. Uh, so once uh, we perform the force balance, uh, we should be getting um, F C F uh, or F E F, uh, both of them put together, uh, equal to 63.5 kilonewtons. And uh, this uh, value is uh, going to be in uh, compression. All right. Uh, so we move on. Uh, we were able to find uh, F C F, and uh, uh, this is the same as um, uh, finding F E F uh, because we know that uh, F C F and F E F are the same. Uh, so uh, once we have this, uh, we move to the next pin, and I think uh, that pin is going to be the pin at uh, D. So if you look at the pin at uh, D. Right, so going back to the first figure, uh, so the things that we were able to figure out uh, from this analysis was FCD was able to be found, uh, we were able to find FCF which means that FEF was also able to be found. Uh, so the only thing that is left for us to find out is the tension in the cable and then uh, the force along the bar DE. Right. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, we have to draw the pin diagram at the point D. At the point D, you see that uh, there is the tension. Tension makes an angle of 90 degrees with the bar DE. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and then uh, we have the rest of the bars, which is uh, bar GD, and then uh, this member DC. DF is zero because it's a zero force member, so we're not going to include that in the analysis. All right, uh, so uh, let's draw the pin diagram at uh, point C. So pin at D. Uh, so if I draw the pin diagram at D, I have the following. Uh, first of all, I draw the uh, uh, force on the uh, bars uh, themselves. Uh, so that's going to be bar GD or DG. Right. So this is going to be F DG horizontal, and then I'm going to have F DC, which we just found out uh, was in tension. Uh, so this is going to be F. DC or FCD, which is the same. We are not going to make a distinction between the two. We take care of their directions uh, by ourselves and we let the magnitudes be called whatever they are. Uh, then I'm going to have uh, one more, uh, which is FDE, which is pointing in the following manner. So this is F. D E and then uh, lastly I'm going to have the tension on the cable the tension on the cable as you can see is making a 90 degree angle with uh, this uh, line here and uh, we're going to call this tension as uh, capital T and uh, we need some angles here uh, so I'm just going to extend uh, this line uh, right there and uh, I'm going to extend this line uh, right here uh, we know that each of these angles are 60 degrees for the triangles themselves because uh, they are all equilateral triangles uh, which means that uh, this angle is uh, 60 degrees uh, so this is going to be 30 and uh, this is also going to be 30 degrees and uh, we know that uh, the angle uh, from here on to there is uh, a 90 degree angle which means that this is going to be a 60 degree angle which means that this remaining angle here is going to be 30 degrees. 
All right. And uh, so, uh, what we have to do here is uh, we have to see what are the unknowns that we have. We do not know the cable tension T and uh, we also do not know the force along the bar DE. Uh, but the knowns in this problem are F, DG and F, CD and uh, F, uh, DG as uh, we found out uh, before was 34.64 kilonewtons in tension and then F, CD uh, was uh, 57.7 uh, kilonewtons in tension as well. Uh, so, let's write down those two values. Uh, this is the pin diagram at uh, D here. Uh, so, this is D and uh, this angle here uh, we know uh, is 30 degrees so we can split uh, before we even do any of these things uh, let's split the forces into their components uh, I'm going to have FCD cosine 30 and I'm going to have a component in the horizontal direction FCD sine 30 and then uh, likewise uh, FDE I'm going to have a component in the uh, horizontal and in the vertical direction uh, so this is going to be F uh, D E at uh, the angle is 60 degrees uh, so this is going to be a uh, cosine 60 or a sine 30 it's the same thing and then uh, this component here is uh, F D E cosine 30 or sine 60 and then the cable tension itself I'm going to split it into two more components uh, one component pointing up and then uh, one component pointing uh, this way so this is going to be T cosine 30 and then T sine 30 and all of this action is taking place at the uh, uh, pin at uh, D. Alright, so we have all these forces, uh, uh, we know the uh, magnitudes of the uh, following forces, uh, FCD is said to be in tension uh, 57.7 uh, kilonewtons and uh, FDG uh, was 34.64 kilonewtons in tension as well. So these are things that we know from before. Alright, uh, so you see that in this problem, uh, whatever direction you start off with, either, either the x or the y direction, there, are, there seem to be two unknowns. Uh, we have F D E sine 60 and then the tension as unknowns in the vertical. If I look at the horizontal T cosine 30 and F D E cosine 60, both of them are uh, uh, unknowns. Uh, so we are going to end up uh, solving a system of linear algebraic equations. Uh, so let's do this here. Uh, we have uh, first of all the uh, coordinate system positive x and positive y. This is positive x and uh, positive y. And uh, let's start off by summing forces in the uh, x direction. So sum of forces in the x direction all the forces pointing to the right uh, being equal to 0 uh, being positive and set equal to 0 I have T cosine 30 plus F D E cosine 60 and then you see the remaining forces are F D G this is equal to F D G and then F C D sine 30 so that's one equation right there Then I do the same thing along the y direction, sum of forces in the uh, y direction, forces pointing up being positive. Uh, what are the forces in the y direction? I'm going to have T sine 30 pointing up. I'm going to have F D E sine 60 pointing down. And then I take uh, the remaining forces, uh, which is F C D cosine 30, which is pointing down. And uh, this is actually going to be a minus F C D cosine 30, but I bring it on to the right hand side. And so that's going to be F C D cosine 30 there. Alright, so I have two equations and two unknowns. Uh, these are things that we can solve for. And uh, once we solve, uh, we get the tension uh, to be equal to 80 kilonewtons. Of course, tension is always uh, positive because it's a cable. And then uh, we get FDE to be minus 11.5 kilonewtons which means that FDE is actually in a state of compression. Alright, uh, so we have uh, completed uh, uh, finding all the unknown uh, forces in these bars right here and uh, so if we make a list of all the uh, force values that we have found out, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at that here. Uh, so here are all the uh, uh, bars and um, uh, I'm going to draw a quick uh, figure uh, for the uh, truss itself so that we can list all the forces and the final answers. Uh, so here is the truss. Then uh, each of these are uh, pin connected. The 
there's a pin that is connected for the ground right there and then there is a cable that is uh, connected here this cable makes an angle of 90 degrees and then uh, we have a couple of other bars which are uh, vertically connected here one more here and then one more here uh, of course these are all pin connected and then uh, there are applied forces uh, which are acting uh, 30 kilonewtons and uh, 20 kilonewtons and then uh, let's uh, label all these uh, points here so this is going to be A this was point B, this was C, this was D, this was E, F, G, and then H. All right, and uh, this was uh, 5 meters, uh, this angle here is 60 degrees, that entire angle is 60 degrees, that angle is 60 degrees, that angle is also 60 degrees, and so on, so all of them are equilateral triangles. And uh, so let's list all the uh, force values that we have obtained so far. All right, so FAB was obtained as 34.64 kilonewtons in a state of tension. And then uh, we have FAH is equal to FHC. And this was 17.32 kilonewtons in compression. And then uh, we move on to the next one, which is FBC. Uh, we found FBC to be in compression as well, 34.64 kilonewtons in compression and then we have FBG which is the same as FGD and uh, both of these put together were 34.64 kilonewtons in tension so the compression values were things that we obtained as negative answers if you are saying them as a negative answer do not put the compression there that's double counting uh, but typically this is the way you want to represent the answers uh, by not putting any negative or positive sign but just mentioning that this bar is in tension versus this bar is in compression and then i have fcd which is one of the major ones there 57.7 uh, uh, kilonewtons in uh, tension and then i have fcf which is the same as f f e and uh, this is uh, 63.5 kilonewtons in a state of compression. Then I have FDE, which is obtained as 11.5 kilonewtons in compression. And then I have the zero force members. FGC is a zero force member. Then I have FBH, was a zero force member as well. And then FDF was a zero force member so these were the zero force members and then finally the tension in the cable uh, was a value of 80 uh, kilonewtons and uh, written this way it is uh, very easy for somebody to inspect and see okay uh, this truss is in uh, this bar is in tension versus that bar is in compression and there could be uh, certain bars that could be potentially uh, important from a failure analysis perspective and uh, one could uh, uh, just glance at the results and then zoom in and see okay uh, perhaps this is a bar that is of interest to me it has the largest value in compression or this is the one that has the largest value and tension and so uh, that is going to be of interest to me. Alright, uh, so we started off with um, uh, this, this problem. Uh, we wanted to solve this using the method of joints um, and then we wanted to find the cable tension as well. Uh, we came up with a lot of assumptions to begin the problem with. Uh, we said that okay, uh, the bars of the trusses are weightless, uh, the, uh, the bars of the trusses are pin connected, the pins are smooth and frictionless. And then importantly, uh, we say that uh, there are no forces acting on the bars of the trusses themselves. If there are any applied loadings, they are acting only on the pins or the joints. And uh, so a consequence of this is that each and every bar of a truss is a two-force member. And since it's a two-force member, uh, we start the analysis by assuming all the bars to be in tension. And uh, this means that uh, each bar which is said to be in a state of tension is going to be pulling on a pin. We perform force analysis on each and every joint. Uh, we make sure that uh, we inspect for zero force members first. We found these three to be zero force members by inspection uh, based on the criteria that we learned in lecture. Uh, one of the three criteria that we learned in lecture. Uh, then we start zooming in on pins that contain two or lesser number of unknowns. Uh, why two? This is because uh, each pin is treated as a particle. Each particle in equilibrium has two force balance equations and uh, so we cannot uh, choose a pin that contains more than two unknown forces or more than two unknown member forces. Uh, so we started off at the pin A, there were only two unknown forces AB and AH. We solved for these two using equilibrium analysis. Uh, then we went to pin B, 
this was a zero force member we are already found out AB and so we were left with only two unknown forces uh, then we went to pin C uh, where we said that this was equal to this force we had found out FBC from the pin uh, analysis at B uh, GC was a zero force member and uh, so we had only two unknown forces uh, CD and CF and then lastly we went to the pin at D and as a consequence we were also able to find uh, the cable tension okay, thank you